Hello everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe and we're back with Epilogue's GB Operator. This device allows you to turn your PC into a Game Boy cartridge-based console system. Now, I've already done a video all about the GB Operator. This is a follow-up video to show you a few new things that I'm finally able to show you now that I've ordered a couple of extra goodies and I've gained a little bit of knowledge. Now, if we look at the Epilogue website, it says that the GB Operator can help you identify counterfeit or bootleg cartridges. And as you can see, the Game Boy selections come in various different colors, different types of cases. They have clear cases, they have solid cases, colored cases. There's a multitude of different cartridge styles that the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color offered. And if you go up on eBay right now and try to order some of these games, you're probably likely to run into a bootleg or counterfeit device. So one of the features of the Epilog operator is to provide us with the ability to track down counterfeit cartridges and realize if what we have here are genuine cartridges or if in fact we have been a victim of a scam. But along with that, the other thing we were unable to test, if you remember from the previous video, a friend of mine sent me a flash cartridge, and this device is supposed to allow us to write and rewrite to flash cartridges. So we didn't have one that actually worked. He provided me with one, but it must be bricked or some other problem with it. So I went ahead and ordered some flash cartridges of my own. So now we're gonna have an opportunity to see how this device works with these flash cartridges. And I've got a great story behind getting a hold of these cartridges. And maybe to can show you some of the limitations of the GB operator's ability to write to them. So let's get started. So I ordered from a company called Cool Spot. Cool Spot, these guys are in the UK. And uh, I'd like to, I'm not, I paid, full price for my cartridge, okay? So I am not a compensated endorser by any means, but I spent a lot of time talking to these folks and I'll explain to you why shortly. And these guys are the epitome of professional. They're amazing people to work with. They were um, professional, friendly, knowledgeable. These guys aren't some turnkey people who don't have a clue what um, what GB is all about. They, they, are, they are professionals, they are fans. So, uh, Free endorsement there, no compensation involved. Uh, I really love these guys. And after I'm done with my story, you'll probably understand why. So let's take a look. This was the first cartridge that I received from them. And if we open this guy up, I don't know why these cartridges are so hard to open, at least for me. All right. So this is a what you would consider a blank flashable cartridge. And if you hold it up to any other Game Boy cartridge, you could be fooled. The word game appears up here. This says Nintendo Game Pack, uh, Nintendo uh, Game Boy up there, but they're pretty close. And if you were to put a label on here, an unsuspecting person could easily believe this was the real McCoy. So this particular cartridge came to me from their website and their website did not offer uh, the size of the cartridge. Now, Game Boy games go up to, or Game Boy Color, go up to eight megabytes. The biggest ones you can get are eight megabytes in size. There's only a handful of them though. Most of them are four megabytes or less, where actually most of them are actually even just two megabytes or less. So I ordered the cartridge hoping without uh, any sort of size on their website. Their, the website did not say what size this was. I simply assumed that they would provide you with the largest possible cartridge, which would be eight megabytes. So that being the case, I got this guy home, right? And I plugged it in. And as you can see, we I've already flashed Mr. Do on here. So you can take a look here and see that I have already flashed Mr. Do. Before we get into the whole flashing thing though, now we have an opportunity. If this, if this cartridge had a nice Mr. Do label on it and I paid $17 for it on eBay, um, I might've thought I got a good deal. But if you check out in the Epilogue Operator software, it tells you very clearly that this is an unofficial cartridge, despite how it may look on the outside, despite, that it, despite the fact that it actually has a working game on it, that doesn't mean that it is a real cartridge. And if they had tried to sell me this as a collectible item or something like that, I would have gotten ripped off. So this is how it, it identifies an unofficial cartridge. 
Now, I do not know if there are cartridges out there that are right once that you could flash them. I'm sure that you can get uh, bootleg hardware that is unflashable. In this case, it not only tells us it's unofficial, but it also tells us that it is rewritable, which means I can put game after game after game on here over and over again, and then take this guy out and put it right inside my real hardware and get to be able to play whatever game I want. Now, now listen, there's no SD card in here. I can't put 500 Game Boy games in here. But if what you're interested in is playing one of these Game Boy games on original hardware uh, and being able to change it out at will, this is a perfect solution for you. So we do have the ability to detect unofficial cartridges. If this had been a bootleg, I would have definitely seen it. If we move over to data, one of the tabs that was unavailable to us prior to is now available, upload game. Overwrite the game data on your cartridge with a different file. Make sure the game title you're writing to is valid by testing it on an external emulator first. Tip, transfer your homebrew to a cartridge and play it on original hardware. So that's, that's what they're intending you to do, right? Epilogue has been very plain that they're not interested in piracy. They're not looking to to um, to be those guys. They are looking to provide you with an excellent turnkey experience using original cartridges. However, they do support this if you're a homebrew developer. Uh, and of course, unfortunately, um, that does bring in the side effect of being able to, to do piracy. So I'm gonna go ahead, just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and hit start here and I'm going to navigate to my, my color uh, ROMs. Oops, let me see if I move this dialog over for you. I don't know why the dialog is not moving. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I will go ahead and choose... Well, I'll tell you what, having two screens up, well, that'll confuse you. All right. <laughs> and I fell for it again. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to sort these by size. And you can see here, if I sort by size... The largest one that I have is four megabytes in size. I don't have any eight megabytes. That's uh, Shantae. That's, um, there's a couple of Japanese games. For the most part, though, the biggest thing I might be interested in would be four megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and try to write this Dragon's Lair game to it. So I actually own the cartridge here, Dragon's Lair for the Game Boy. And as you can see, it is clearing the space, and it's going to start writing the game. Now, I didn't get any prompts. It didn't tell me hey, you're trying to write a four megabyte game onto a two megabyte card or anything like that. It didn't even warn me that it was going to erase all my crap. And now it writes the game. Now you can see we're moving along pretty good here. We're already 10% done. Just chugging along, 16%, 17%. You would think it'd be faster. You know, we are very spoiled in the age of SD cards and external hard drives. We're not used to <laughs> four megabytes taking absolutely bloody forever to actually be committed to some form of media. But there, here we are. We're 35%. We're cruising along. This is a very big game. If you put like a one meg on here, it'd be really, really fast. So we're at 44%, 45%. Now, check this out. We hit 50% and it stops. Like, stopped. It's still at 50%. It's sitting here. So I, I was a little bit, a little bit surprised. Uh, something's not quite right here. Obviously, something isn't working. And if you... Watch this close enough, and if we wait long enough, eventually it will get to 100%. It just went 1% in this whole time, right? So if we wanted to wait for this thing to finish, we would be here a while. And it's still sitting here. So in my mind, either there's something wrong with the Epilogue software, or maybe this cartridge isn't four megabytes. Maybe it's two. That would make sense, right? You get to 50 and now it's trying to write to an area of memory that isn't there. So it tries and tries and tries and tries and eventually fails and then it moves on to the next bit. So yeah, so this is what I suspected is I actually had a two megabyte cartridge and I'm going to just pull this out 
that's not really helping anyway. And the only way to really recover from this is either to let it go, um, is to let it go or take the cartridge out and unplug it. And so now we're back into uh, a situation. And if you plug this guy in, rah, rah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, and by the way, if we had let it finish, it would still look like this, right? So just the fact that we interrupted, it doesn't matter. So this cartridge is corrupted. Um, and so that's when I started on my, my tour of duty, uh, speaking with the folks over at Cool Spot. And they assured me that they sell four megabyte cartridges. And I told them, right, uh, you probably should disclose on your website how big your cartridges are. And they're like, that's a great point. We didn't even think about that. Um, let's, we'll go ahead and do that. In the meantime, um, we believe, and, and by the way, they believed me. They, I explained to them what the situation was, what software I was using, and that it was about 50%, at 50%, it would stop writing. He says, yeah, that really sounds like a two megabyte cartridge. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like that guy, you know, but when I used to buy cheap SD cards off eBay, they would be selling us 512, you know, megabyte or uh, uh, gigabyte cartridges off of eBay for pennies on the dollar. And they really turned out to be 64 uh, gigabyte cartridges or SD cards that had just been reformatted and the fat table had been tricked. And this guy was really knowledgeable. He knew exactly what I was talking about. He said, yeah, I had the same problem when, you know, when SD cards were getting big. And so he said, listen, I'm going to drop you a new one in the mail today. I'm going to test it myself and burn a four megabyte game on it and send it to you. At no charge. I'm going to send it to you with fast shipping. I'm going to make sure that you get this guy and you are taken care of. And I'm like, wow, you know, first off, I expected him to argue with me, open the cartridge, show me that it really is two megabytes. But he said, listen, you know, we had some of them sneak into a batch and uh, you must've got one. And I'm sorry about that. And we're going to make it right. So they sent me this new guy and this new guy had, as he promised, it had Dragon's Lair already written to it, which it no longer, well, it might still have it written to it. I might've put it back as part of my testing. Let's take a look. Yes. Dragon's Lair is on there. And we've, so we've written a four megabyte game to this cartridge. So we know for a fact that this does support it. Now, I am going to, so this is sort of crazy, and I'm waiting on Epilogue to write me back, and if I hear back from them before I publish this video, I will most certainly uh, uh, post a, uh, I will definitely post the reasoning behind it. So I'm going to go right back here, and I am going to uh, move my thing over. I don't know why it keeps recentering, but okay. So I'm going to go back and try to write another four megabyte game here, Donkey Kong Country. All right, now, now we actually get a warning. The file selected is too large. The file you've selected is four megabytes while the memory on the device is reported as two megabytes. Would you like to proceed? So yeah, essentially what we got here is this cartridge was misidentified as four megabytes, but was really two. This one is being identified as two megabytes when it's actually four. So what I suspect is these cartridges don't really d disclose what their size is on these cartridges. I'm going to try to get you a close up here. I'm going to try to get a nice angle. There are chips on there. And I'm assuming that what Epilogue does is they read a chip or a, a, a firmware ID of some sort from the chip. And they probably use that ID in a little database that says if the chip number equals this, then it's this size. If the chip number equals this, it's that size. And the database that they have simply isn't all inclusive, right? Because they can't, they haven't bought every single flash card out there. And so what probably is the case is their database just needs to be updated. And so, and they even tell, told me in an email, can you open up the cartridge and take a picture of the chipset? And then we will update it in our database. Right. And so everyone's, everyone's doing the best they can, you know, epilogue is like, yeah, wow. You know, uh, okay, great. Can you send us a copy of that, um, uh, of that chip? And then cool, uh, cool spot is basically, Hey, you know, we, we messed up and we sent you the wrong, you know, we sent you a cartridge that's too small for most people wouldn't even know it because they probably aren't writing four megabyte games. So the real question now is, can this game be written anyway, even though we know that it's four megabytes, but Epilogue is saying it's not. We're lucky it doesn't just say, okay. So we can go ahead and try to write it. And as you can see, with all write operations, we get this sort of amber color light indicating that there's some, there's some good stuff going on here. 
and it says erasing data. And if we go over here to the, uh, the uh, upload game, we can see actually that it is, I sort of tricked it. Remember I pulled this guy out in the middle. That's why it changed screens. So it is, it's erasing and it, uh, it is starting to write. Now, four megabytes, obviously, even when it's actually writing correctly, is still going to take a little while. All right, we're starting to finish up the right here. And uh, as you can see, everything, the, everything looks just fine. So now we're going to make sure that the cartridge actually wrote. And there we go. Everything is hunky-dory. So this, this is obviously, this could easily happen to anybody. And so uh, I'd be very careful about buying cartridges from AliExpress or one of these other locations. Um, obviously, cool spots located in the UK, so it takes a little bit of time and there's some, some longer shipping maybe. But these guys are a class act and they made right um, the mistake that they had had. So, so to be honest with you, um, I, would, I, would, I would stick with them because they're a known entity and you know the epilogue works with it. Uh, so I would check that out. Uh, you're, you're not talking about a ton of cash. I believe all delivered, this was under $30, um, which is kind of nice when you, you know you can write and rewrite and rewrite any, any of the games that you want on there, outside, of course, of the 8 megabyte Game Boy Color games. So that's really it. I mean, so we can now we can take this cartridge out. We can pop it into our official device. And you can see that it works great. How neat, right? So literally, you get the best of both worlds. You get the you get the world of software emulation, essentially, and you get the ability to take your favorite game and still play it on some sort of original hardware at your leisure. So listen, I hope you enjoyed looking at this. If you have any other questions about the Game Boy Operator, how it might work with uh, a particular situation, please let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you liking the video and uh, subscribing to the channel. It really helps out. And, uh, of course, to share this video with your friends. Man, this is a neat, neat, neat little device. And I know it seems sort of silly to use cartridges when you've got the ability to use whatever emulator you want and ROMs. But there's something sort of magical and tactile about changing out a cartridge. You know, it just, it's a neat, it's a neat experience that a lot of people, especially younger folks, haven't had the opportunity to experience or maybe... That one game, this Dragon Slayer game, cost me like 40 bucks. You know, who wants to spend 40 bucks on a single old 8-bit video game, right? When you could just use a ROM image. Um, so you could, you know, you could technically do that by getting one of these little flash cartridges. And the epilogue works great for that. So again, I'm Shane R. Monroe. And as always, thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Take care.